Hi, this is a painting of a male white-throated sparrow. I photographed this guy as it migrated through our backyard last spring and thought it'd make a fun painting. Um, it's only a 7 by 10 inch watercolor, so it's pretty small, but it was a lot of fun to work on. I apologize in advance because I missed the first 5 or 10 minutes of the painting when I was videotaping this, but you'll get the idea of what I did. I started with a wet-on-wet -wet wash with the several premix colors varying from orange to green and a lot in between and then spattered in different greens to have some back runs and uh, put a couple of oranges and sprayed some white, some just plain water to get back runs in and here I am applying some dark greens to have it kind of simulate a uh, leafy kind of background. I wasn't concerned with realism with this, I was kind of just trying to get a feeling for all those uh, colors in the back and uh, an overall density of color. And so I started washing in some other greens on top of the stuff as it was dry at this point and bringing in some darker areas. I wanted to have a couple of tiers where you'd see some darker greens and, you know, imply that there were a couple of bushes or shrubs. And then I put in a couple of you know, light, the darker branches to give the idea of more tree. And then I peeled off a liquid frisket, leaving the white of the paper. At this point, I transferred the sketch over with some tracing paper and then started washing in the lightest local colors of the uh, foreground objects. Um, I'm working light to dark, and I put in the lightest color for that area. So with some of these darker areas, those will be just getting darker and darker, so I can get a little bit darker faster on those. Um, but I find that many layers working light to dark is the way to go, and I work more opaquely as I go. So the pigments you can see here are very wet and washy on the right, and as I progress through the painting, those will become darker and darker and more opaque. Um, I'm using a butcher's tray for mixing paint. I find that's the best surface. It's you know, you can really judge the colors well on that, um, and it doesn't uh, beat up like some of the plastic palette. So, and I'm switching between brushes. Right here, I'm using a very fine five off, but most of the time, I'm using a number two or a number four round um, sable brush. And again, I try to build all the foreground with about the same level, you know, so I'll pay attention to the bird and the branches all at the same time. Uh, otherwise, I, I find there's a tendency to, if you work on just one area, you'll have a very defined bird and that kind of roughed in branches. If I work the whole painting at once, it all comes together. You can see my reference photo that I took on the back. It's it kind of has a gray brown background, and I want it really greened it up, and I moved some of the branches around to give a better definition of the bird. So I moved the one branch behind its beak off to the side and moved some of the other things around just to uh, frame it up a little bit better. But they're cute little birds. Certainly worthy of a painting. It took me a long time to get to this one. Um, and again, you use that number two round, and you can see that the paints are getting a little bit more opaque here as they go. But many, many layers, I find, ends up making it look more realistic as you go. But again, I wasn't going after strict realism with this. Um, you know, the background's a little, uh, a little more wild and fanciful, perhaps, than, uh, you know, rendering every leaf. But I think that in the end, it has a painterly feel without, and, and yet still has some of the uh, excitement and um, accidental nature of a wash with these back runs, just suggesting some of those leaves and branches. And I'm switching brushes in between these, so again, I, I, I'm for some of the really fine work, like on the feet, I'll switch to a, a, a 5 aught brush to really get the finest lines. Um, and for the others, I'm using a number two round. That's a Windsor & Newton Series 7 brush. Those are really nice and sharp, and they hold a lot of pigment, so you can work an area pretty well and uh, not have to continually be 
reloading your brush with, with pigment. And you see there's just, you go over the thing six bazillion times and eventually it starts uh, looking more, more crisp and defined. Um, many layers makes it, makes it, builds a richness to it that nothing else really does. Um, at least for me, I can't, I can't do these in one pass and have them look, um, you, you lose some of the, the depth to it. And if you build it in many layers and go over it many times, it, it's it, as the things overlap, it builds a richness to the textures that I don't think it can get any other way. And it's a lot of picking away at little details. And you can see that the pigments are starting to get a little bit darker um, as, as I'm moving along. And I'm, in this case, uh, you can see I have a cut open tube that I'm just dipping some of the red from. It uh, dried up long ago, but it's still plenty good for for using. I'm mixing that with a little cobalt um, blue or cerulean blue, excuse me, um, to make some of these shadowy areas that are kind of brownish. I use a whole lot of uh, earth tones. I usually mix mix those as opposed to using a sepia or an umber. Getting close at this point, start to have the good contrast. This bird actually is, is kind of perfect because the maximum contrast where it's really going to pull your eye is the area that really pulls your eye the most is the area with the maximum contrast. On this bird, we have black and white right on the head, so it's going to suck your eye right into that. I want to leave some of the other areas less contrasty, so I left the branches with the shadows those aren't going to have a full range of value. They're not going to go from a full white to a full black. That way I'm going to be able to lead your eye around the painting and keep it focused where I want it. You'll have the wing bars, you'll have the head and the beak, those areas where I have a real black and real white next to each other. And then we'll have secondary areas where we'll have the branch, which has some lighter colors next to some darker colors, but they're not full black, white, full contrast. And then in the background we have the relief where we have things that are closer in value next to each other. So there's less contrast. And that, you know, you can pull some of that with the other branches as they recede into the background. I control those changes in values so we have less contrast and those will fade. That, that for me usually works pretty well as far as building uh, a depth to a painting and having a little bit of foreground, a little bit of background, and some middle ground in between to, to keep your eye progressing through the painting. At this point, I was just putting in the little tiny leaves. I signed my name, and we were pretty much off to the races and done. So there's a finished painting. It was a lot of fun to work on, and uh, a really cute little bird. So it's a white-throated sparrow, 7 by 10 inch transparent watercolor. Uh, thanks for watching. There's more info on this painting on the website.